Good evening and happy Thursday to everyone. It is our bi-weekly live with Council Member Carol Fife. And today was intended to have a conversation with a very special guest from the Midwest about some groundbreaking work that's happening in Evanston, Illinois. But unfortunately, our special guest uh, couldn't be with us this evening. So we're gonna switch it up a little bit. I'm just gonna talk about some of the things that are coming up in District 3. We might end a little sooner than we anticipated, but hopefully we'll still be able to talk about some important things. Um, one of those important things that's coming up, which you know my folks are gonna put in the chat, is this um, people may have seen in the news some of my votes around the uh, development of the ballpark and the um, real estate that will surround the, the development. And um, we're gonna have another town hall. Uh, I, I received hundreds and hundreds of emails around um, doing our due diligence as a city of Oakland and ensuring that West Oakland specifically and old Oakland are um, significantly at the table in terms of the community benefits that they want to see. And there are some other stakeholders that also want to have further conversation about the process. So uh, we're going to have a town hall about that topic. It's coming up. We're going to drop a link to the chat and um, we're going to take just a few. There we go. Um, we're going to just, you know, take a few questions and, and comments from folks just about all of the things that we're doing in District 3 and what's coming up this year. Um, yeah, so the date for the Howard Terminal Town Hall for people who live or work in the district is March 19th at 1 p.m. That's going to be a really busy day. I think I have like five other things. I will be running in the 5K and the Oakland Running Festival that day as well. So if folks want to sponsor me, um, I'm open to that as well, but this town hall is going to be really, really important. So, um, definitely register and, and click the link so you can register and, and come to that. I'm going to, um, also be attending, um, or hosting, I should say another town hall around the closure of community foods, because we're in the process of reopening the parking lot as a market. And I'm working on um, pop-up markets in public space and spaces that private um, private owners also want to activate around ensuring that there are positive things for our young people to be doing, especially as it gets warmer in the city of Oakland. So we're looking at different spaces to hold markets. Um, we're going to host a cannabis market um, in, in city center. So we have uh, lots of events that are coming up and I wanted to make sure that folks are following our Instagram page. So that's Carol for council, um, on Instagram. Um, don't follow me on Twitter because that's where I just talk crazy sometimes. So, um, hello, beautiful. Thank you, Nicole Thomas. Hello to you. And so we're going to just open this up for a little question and answer like uh, office hours. Because of COVID, things have changed a little bit in the city of Oakland. We are looking into hybrid meetings. Um, that means that the city council will be present in the chambers, but it will be hybrid in that uh, the people that are participating will zoom in, call in. But we are looking at returning to council chambers fairly soon. So. Um, in that, some of the office hours have changed. Uh, I've actually been a council member that, that's never been in the chambers because I was elected during COVID. So I have not experienced what it's like to legislate from City Hall, but that may be changing very soon. Um, so yeah, if we don't have any questions for our, this is a definitely a shift in our schedule. And I apologize for people who are coming to hear our special guest. But um, we're just gonna host some uh, host some some hours, office hours, like we would if we were in council. So, um, Jyoti, if you could help me field anything that might be coming in. If not, we might have to end a little early. 
I can also give um, a few updates of the meetings that we've had this week. We've had we had a rules committee meeting this morning. We had a um, closed session, and in closed session, that's when we have conversations with our city attorney and staff around pending litigation. Can't talk about that publicly, but um, there's some important legislation that's coming to city council on March 15th at our March 15th meeting. It's starting a little early. Um, I'm bringing items in conjunction with um, some council members and some independently around a youth jobs program, a summer youth program. Uh, during Mayor Kwan's administration, she made sure that thousands of Flynn youth uh, working during the summer. So because it has waned over the years to the point of like maybe having 200, uh, 220 youth working uh, during the summer, I am working with council member Kaplan, our vice mayor, to bring forth legislation that is going to push to get more youth working. We're expanding the age for young people and um, we're also working to expand it to be more than just summer jobs, right? Because sometimes young people are uh, significant contributors to their household. And you know, it also is an opportunity for young people to do something and be busy um, during the summer and throughout the year. So we're, tr we're pushing to make this program more robust to serve more families so that um, you know folks can have money in their pockets and uh, be busy uh, throughout the year. So that's something that's coming to the March 15th city council. It's a pretty it's a pretty packed agenda. Um, but I'm also bringing a recognition for the McClymans High School football team as well as the coach for their championship win. Uh, I also have um, an amendment to legislation around, urging peace in Ukraine. But my analysis and my angle is not necessarily the, the typical angle that you're hearing in the media and in the news a lot, because you see pictures of, you know, European children and, you know, just what civilians are experiencing because of this war, which is tragic. And war is just something that um, it, it impacts all of the people who don't have any decision-making process. And one of the one of the groups that I'm particularly concerned about in the Ukraine right now is the African students and, and black folks in the country that are not being allowed to leave, that are being pushed off trains and being completely disregarded during this critical time. And so the resolution that I'm joining in with council member called and council member Tao are, are to bring attention to that because that language wasn't in the resolution as it was presented. So I talked to uh, to the maker of the resolution and asked if I could make an amendment to be very specific, to call on the president of Ukraine to acknowledge and respect the lives of the black people in this country that are being treated like second class citizens. I think that's super important. Um, I also wanted to, um, <laughs> yeah, I gotta, gotta bring up the things that are not talked about. Um, and so we also had a public safety committee meeting this past Tuesday. Um, it's a committee that I chair, also very significant information in that particular meeting around um, several, several issues. Number one, um, one of the issues that has been in council for years is the situation around the Bay case. And that's a um, a very convoluted agenda item that keeps coming back time and time again because there is police misconduct that is being charged by the family who lost several loved ones to incarceration as well as murder. And it's surrounding um, the murder of Chauncey Bailey, which alleges misconduct um, in how the case was handled, as well as um, alleges uh, cover-ups of some things that happened in the um, in the murder of Chauncey Bailey. So there's a lot that um, is going on there, but we recently hired an inspector general, Michelle Phillips, and she is the current IG that is tasked to do that work. 
but she's also working on the NSA. So you know, as, as we know, it's going on t- two decades of the city of Oakland's police department being under um, a negotiated settlement agreement and federal oversight. And um, there is belief that we are on the precipice of being able to um, be released from that oversight. And so that is the primary focus of um, the inspector general, Michelle Phillips. And so because she's a staff of one, it makes it really difficult for her to focus on much of anything um, because she's she's overburdened with the work that she has to do. So unfortunately, we did not get new information on the Bay case. And it, it, it is something that people should be paying attention to, paying very close attention to the trajectory of what happens with this particular agenda item. And I'm going to be in contact with the IG, with the inspector general, so that we stay in front of that information. We also had on Tuesday an agenda item that talked about the hiring and staffing of the Oakland Police Department. And I'm bringing this up because I chair public safety. It's not something that I wanted to do. Um, I, I I drew the short straw. No one wanted to facilitate public safety. It wasn't like on the top of people's list. So um, it is a very, very important issue. And I stress at every meeting, or I try to stress at, at that every meeting, that policing is not the only way that we can keep our community safe. Policing is at the end of the spectrum when all the other social uh, safety nets have failed. Some social safety nets don't even exist, but Police are the punitive arm of us not doing what we should be doing as a society to keep people safe in the first place. Because the reality is there are people who will do things that hurt other people. And that has to be addressed in our society. But the more people who are hurting, like emotionally, physically, mentally, in all these ways, the more uh, people that are in that space who don't have access to all of the things that would make a peaceful life, the more we need police. And well, the more that it will, they will be able to justify the need for police. I believe that if we invest in human beings on the front end of their lives and make sure that people have access to all of the things that truly create safety, we'll have a less uh, we'll have less of a need of um, these punitive factors. But you know, that's my soapbox. Um, but in, in any case, there was a report that came to Public Safety this Tuesday on the staffing levels. And if you all were paying attention to the, the media and what was happening in the news around um, you know, attrition, you knew that um, the sky was falling according to um, the Oakland Police Officers Association and, and, and the mayor and, and several other individuals that were saying, we need more police academies. The council budgeted for four um, and they said that that was a travesty that even though we tip, there are typically four police academies per year, um, folks were pushing for six and seven police academies this year. So in the public safety committee meeting, we learned that the one of the reasons there's a high level of attrition in OPD is because of a refusal to get vaccinated by, by several officers. And so that's news that was um, new to to many members of the public and myself as well as the chair, um, but also because um, that hadn't been publicized, right? And vaccination mandates are one of the um, policies of the city of Oakland. And so there was no, this was a, a shock um, to, to many individuals. And so that's part of why the, the numbers are dropping, but you, if you, read the news, the San Francisco Chronicle and the letters that are published by the president of the Police Officers Association, they're saying that it's because the council president allows um, the public to bash OPD and that's why attrition is so high. And so this this animus, this um, unfounded, these unfounded claims, these untrue claims are um, what's you know dominating the news cycles and and really there needs to be some accountability for putting out false information because I, it's also my belief that um, when you have the law enforcement agencies of any particular city, just like in Los Angeles, 
where the chief of police said, don't come to Los Angeles because the police can't keep you safe. To me, that's the biggest signal to people who want to do dirt to be like, oh, let's go to LA. The police chief said they're not going to do anything about anything. So there needs to be more responsibility and professionalism on the part of law enforcement agencies, because, you know, just even being around security and understanding how security works, you don't telegraph to folks that you're weak. I mean, that's just bad practice. So um, also something that came to public safety this week. And so honestly, I'm just trying to give you all uh, just a brief overview of some of the things that happened this week and uh, look forward to what's to come because our special guest is not with us this evening. We'll be able to talk to her um, lives moving forward, but unfortunately, um, we don't have her with us today. We do have our Black New Deal Symposium uh, YouTube recording up and it's available for people to watch. I've received several email requests like, where's the link? It was in the newsletter, y'all. The people who read the newsletter, the, the link was right in there so you can click it, but um, we'll drop that in the chat as well because I know a lot of people weren't able to stay for the whole event. We had amazing speakers and presenters um, deeply steeped in their topic area, but super informative with information that is the foundation for why we need investment in our communities. School closures is the opposite of investment. And so some of the things that were spoken of in this new Black New Deal Symposium address what is actually needed in our communities and how we got to where we are today. So I encourage folks to check it out. I had Ann Burlack um, say, hey, this needs to be on uh, on in high school curriculums and in different places because it was just that poignant, just that informative. So once again, encourage folks to check that out. Um, and I will ask my, my staff that's with me today, my true trusted supporter and communication staff person, Jyoti, if there aren't any um, pressing questions or there aren't folks that are checking or asking anything that needs to be clarified, then I think we're gonna call it a day. Yeah, we haven't seen any questions in the chat, so I think we can end the broadcast and really hope to get our special guest here another time. Absolutely. And did we we drop the chat for the, yep, we sure did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Josie. Appreciate everything that you do. And thank you for folks for tuning in. We'll be back and we're going to have some deep conversations about a framework case study for reparations in Evanston, Illinois, and so many other topics. But until we meet again, until soon, good night.